The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Checking out the markets. Uh, not just a whole lot going on today. We got the S&P up six points. We got the NASDAQ up nine. We have the Russell is down one point right now, basically 1.1. 1 .1. And uh, looking over at the Dow, it's up, uh, you know, 67, 68 points. So pretty much the same move, uh, nearly half percent. I guess you could say it's the leader at the moment for the uh, indices right there. We have gold is down nine points on the day. We got silver um, compared to settlement is uh, down 0.195, which is about almost oh, well, somewhere between half and a quarter percent. We'll get on over at copper. It is basically just flat on the day. And we got oil. It's up 78 cents right now with corn currently down 5.75 and soybeans up 8.25. We're going over at your dollar. After all the volatility we've seen in it, it's uh, pretty quiet right now, down six pips. Look at the pound dollar down 34. Aussie dollar up 10. Euro yen up 24. Pound yen up 12. US yen up 21 pips. US Canadian down 44. And uh, so it's sort of the big mover on the Forex pairs right there. We got US franc is up a mere three pips on the day. So that's looking at all those different markets. And uh, checking things out, let's go ahead and look right now what uh, announcements we had come out last night, what announcements we have coming out today, coming on up. And uh, go ahead and I'll pull up the charts as we go through some of these. Like I said, went ahead and already came out. We'll go ahead and start off with the USGN came out last night. A little bit of fundamental news there, and I can uh, pull that on up for you. And it wasn't really detailed news. Uh, Baker Japan Governor um, came out, Corrado, came out and um, you know, made a little speech around 8 o'clock eastern time and so let me pull that and we'll zoom in on the chart right here make it a lot easier to see so eight o'clock last night and we saw a little bit of movement on that the market was sort of you know sort of rallied up a little bit not much you could have done off of that trade in and of itself but um so like and that's one of the things i said last night is don't look for a whole lot of movement on that it's hard to really play a move uh, whenever there's not specifically a number coming out. Looking on over at the Aussie dollar, 12.45 this morning, so bright and early. And uh, Governor came out again, not a whole lot. We did have some nice solid movement on the Aussie dollar for the entire day. It just wasn't necessarily just purely news-based on that trade. And you had some great trade setups you can see flowing right up there on Aussie dollar. If we go on down and look at this morning, we had the uh, core durable good orders. And the durable goods, and uh, you know, one of the pairs I like to look at on that is the USD yen. We're just now starting to see some movement, so it was a really slow mover this morning. Unless you were playing a later, like a three o'clock expiration, probably the news trade did not uh, work out for you. But uh, we went ahead and saw 8:30 core durable goods and durable goods at 8:30 in the morning. And uh, let me get my crosshair up there; it makes it a little bit easier. But right there, and the problem with that is what we had was we had core durable goods come in negative, and we had durable goods come in positive. So you had conflicting reports, and uh, that usually causes basically nothing. <laughs> so market goes up, market goes down, market goes up, market goes down, but it really doesn't go anywhere. And so we didn't get a whole lot of movement at all off the 8:30 trade. And uh, we rolling forward. We had a couple other uh, reports coming out. The uh, other major impact reports that came out were the CB Consumer Confidence and New Home Sales. Both were negative. And um, so if we go in and look at those at 10 o'clock, and what you can see right here, didn't really have, and we had some movement. I mean, it went down, but then it decided to rally on up. And so now we're just now finally starting to get some movement. Like I said, on those trades, if you were just playing, say, the, uh, you know, 1030, or sorry, not 1030, but the, you know, the 11 o'clock expiration, 12 o'clock expiration, it would have been hard to do 12 because it wouldn't have been um, fully out yet. But if you would have been playing the 11 o'clock expiration, or the 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock in this case probably would have worked out pretty well for you. Probably would have got a 1-to-1 one -one on that. Um, a lot of times, though, it's hard to get those uh, those big moves on those 3 o'clock, so you a lot of times focus on the shorter-term ones. And uh, But as you can see, it's now starting to move up. It just uh, broke through its half deviation level, and uh, it's trying to you know make a bit of a run for it there, so we'll see if it keeps going. But um, USN decided to finally make a little bit of a move for the day. 
So what do we got coming up tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we're going to have the current account coming out of the pound, which is usually a pretty good announcement at the same time. They also have their final GDP. That's not the preliminary, which is the strongest GDP, but they do have the final GDP coming out. And uh, the current account, like I said, coming out, that comes out at 5.30 in the morning on the pound dollar. Should be a good trade to check out right there. We look over at the Italian 10-year bond auction. That's also coming out, but we don't have a time on it. Um, it's basically just tentative. It'll be released when it's released. It'll definitely have an effect on the euro and should have an effect for us for tomorrow. But since we don't know the exact time that all the uh, you know numbers are going to be released, it's going to be a harder one to trade. And um, you know as we've seen lately, the, the Italian bonds really haven't done that bad. They've actually been ticking pretty good. Um, last time they did move on up to 4.83 from 4.17. That's one of the highest levels they've had. Still haven't broken that important 5% level, 5.5%. They get up to 6. That's when things start getting really interesting. That's when people start worrying about defaults and everything else. So got the Italian 10-year bond auction. Again, that's going to happen sometime. Just be aware of it, okay, that it is going on. We're also going to have the pending home sales coming out tomorrow morning from the U.S. dollar. And we have Canadian CPI coming out at 8.30. So that's going to give you a good USD CAD trade right there at 8.30 and a potential USD yen trade on pending home sales. Uh, you'll have crude oil inventories as well that you can check out at 10:30. Okay, so that gives you a little variety in the trades, and um, basically it gives you, you know, basically a pound trade for tomorrow, gives you a U.S. CAD trade tomorrow, gives you a U.S. yen tr trade tomorrow, and gives you an oil trade tomorrow. So when I talk about these trades, what am I talking about? Gives you these trades for tomorrow. What I'm talking about is trading on Nadex. If you have not done it already, hop on over, and uh, right there on tfnn.com, what you'll do is you'll see the Nadex banner. Click on the Nadex banner. And then under our products, you'll see a demo account. You can get a demo account right away. Just fill in your username, first name, last name, phone, and email address. Click apply for demo, and they'll get you hooked up right away. Now, to get a live account, you'll see create account in two different places here. It's only $100 to fund a live account. It takes about five minutes, and you can actually start trading with it. So if you click create live account, go from start to fund it in as little as five minutes. And, uh, you know, it, this is how I trade the news. So um, I tried trading it in a variety of different ways. I had these complicated, this is pre-Nadex, I had these complicated, you know, OCO, then OCO. So I basically I had to buy above if it went so far, sell below if it went so far, like on the futures market. And then I had a take profit, stop loss built in as well. So if one got triggered, it canceled the other one, and then it'd fire off two OCOs on the one that got filled. It was really complicated, very hard, and any oscillation off the norm could easily throw the trade off. Well, now... It's uh, really easy. So I just go in and I trade on Nadex. I trade with um, the you know the box spreads, or I'll trade uh, sometimes with the binaries on them as well. But uh, over on the box spreads, I'll go in, I'll go to Spread Scanner, and then I'll choose my market. So you know, say if you're choosing USD Yen, and then choose both. And then right up here, I'll go in and choose uh, Minimum Risk Ratio 1 and Maximum Risk 100. And if you scroll down, then you'll see all the possibilities for trades that you could play right now on the USD yen. And you could look at a variety of different markets. You could look at, say, Euro dollar, you know, or tonight we got pound dollar coming out, right? And so you can go in here and you go, okay, well, what trades exist that could be decent trades for me to do that don't have to move too far? And so I can see, well, you know what? I got a 3 o'clock expiration here. I got a 3 o'clock expiration here. Combined risk on that trade. If I take out fees and commissions, basically 6 bucks plus 10 bucks, a so $16 risk on the trade. And it's going to move about 16 pips to be break even. So I'm going to want to make another 16 pips in profit, plus count on the other side to lose, right? Because you want one, basically you're just counting on it goes up, it goes down, you don't care, just go somewhere. So if I have a $16 risk on the trade, I want to make $16 net. So if, let's say if I have $10 risk on one side, $16 risk total, then on the side that has $10 risk on the opposite side, I'm going to make 10 bucks plus 16. Because I need to make back the loss on, the, say, the short side. But then I also need to make an additional 16 on the long side. So wherever I got in, if I got in at 1.158, I'd want to get out 16 ticks higher. So I'd simply put in my order to buy it, and then I'd put in an order to sell to take profit, 16 ticks higher. And then let's say, you know, if we're going in and we're looking at the same trade over here, and on the other side at $16 risk, and let's just say it's $10 risk on the long side. Well, then, if it was 16 bucks risk, I need to make 16 bucks on this side at plus the $10 I'm losing on the long side. So I'd buy back 26 ticks lower. And this is really the simplest way to do a news trade because you don't care what direction it goes. 
You just care that it goes and it goes fast. And do they all work? Of course not. No trade works all the time. What you are looking for is trades that have a good probability, uh, meaning, you know, what is going to move and when it's going to move. Well, news usually makes things move. As long as they're not conflicting, um, and as long as it's just a moving day, news makes things move. So you can look for that. And then does it make it move enough? And that's why I look at the high impact reports. There are a lot of reports that come out every day. I focus on the high impact reports and combine them with the spread scanner to help me quickly and easily identify a trade. So for instance, on this pound dollar trade, it's gonna come out at 5.30. So I'm gonna be looking at the six o'clock expiration. I'm gonna be looking at the seven o'clock expiration and I'm gonna be looking at the three o'clock binary expiration. So I'll be looking at all three of those. So the six and seven spread and the three o'clock binary expiration. You can even look at the six and seven uh, binaries if you wanted to. But I think the spreads are better um, when available uh, most of the time, simply because on the spreads, usually you don't lose on, I, I can't even say usually, but, you know, the advantage is you don't have to lose on both sides. On the binaries, if you don't hit your take profit, both sides are going to lose. On the spreads, let's say it just goes up a little bit, but instead of going up 26 ticks, let's say it just goes up 16. Well, that was your risk was 16. So not only did you make the $10 from the other side, but you actually netted a $6 profit. You only lost on one side and you actually made enough. What if you only, what if it only went up 10 and $10 was a risk on the other side? Well, if it only went up $10 or 10 pips, then you would be break even on the trade. So you could actually get out out of break even if you make the risk of the other side. If you make a little more than the risk, you make some money. If you make the total risk plus the risk on the other side, then you get a one to one. And you could go for more, but I'm more about, on, on the news trades, I'm more for a one-to-one. -one. I'm going for base hits over and over again. I'm not going for two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one. And uh, you can definitely do it. But, uh, you know, it's I've, I've found that one-to-one, -one, you know, if you can get that, you're more likely to get one-to-one -one more consistently than you are to get a two-to-one, meaning if I risk 10, I can, it's easier to make 10, versus if I risk 10, it's obviously going to be as easy to make 20 or 30 or 40. Yeah, I love, you know, making two or three or 400 times, you know, 400% more risk. 4% more profit on my risk, but that only works so long as you get it often enough to cover, you know, how many, would, what would I be if I was just taking one to one every time? Maybe three out of four would have won. So I won 30 bucks and I lost 10 bucks. Well, what if only one out of four win when I'm going for 300%? Well, then three of them lost 30, one of them made 30, okay? And so I netted out at, you know, flat at break even. And uh, so you know, I'm looking for that consistency over and over and over again. It's just, it's simpler, it's easier. Go in, take advantage of it, be out, move on to the next trade, and basically rinse and repeat. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, if these spreads and if these binaries are new to you, definitely make sure over on TFNN you go over and check out the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer. It comes with tutorials on Nadex. You get a two-week free trial. But you go in here and it'll actually give you tutorials on the spreads, on the binaries. It'll give you a tutorial on how to use the box spread scanner. Um, it'll go into how to open an account and really everything you need to know to build a trade in Nadex. So um, anyways, go ahead and check that out. And it also has a Ask Daryl question. So you can hop in there, you can ask questions anytime you want. I'll be happy to help answer any questions you have about the Nadex platform. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this commercial break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, so I'll just go to going through how to do these straddles and these strangles over on Nadex. And like I said, one of my favorite ways to trade one of my favorite ways to trade the news or really the only way I guess I really would say I'd like to trade the news but I'm um, combining those together so again we lined up the trades that we had in place for um, looking at a few of the different markets such as we have uh, you know like for tomorrow we got the pound dollar again at 530 we have the US Canadian at 830 and we have the US yen at 10 o'clock that you can look at trading what about the day after sort of laying out the week we're going to have the USD CAD coming out at 8.30. That one I'm really excited about. We're going to get three CAD, three USD um, happening at the same time. So I'd rank that as probably one of the top trades of the week. Uh, so long as things don't conflict when the news comes out. Uh, but, uh, you know, absent a conflict, we should get at least a night. It might even, honestly, even with a conflict, when you have that many things coming out that are that high of impact, you uh, can get a shock enough in one direction or the other on, to take profit sometimes very fast, even if it reverses. So that's why it is very, very, very important. I can't stress enough how important it is when you place that entry trade and you get in before the announcement comes out, you need to place that take profit at that one-to-one. -one. So your total risk puts the risk on the other side. you got to do it because it may move so fast and come right back like it's a slingshot. I mean, it's back, boom, it pulls it back, and then all of a sudden it just takes off in the other direction. And you may miss out completely on the profitable trade because you don't have your take profit order sitting there. And why do people do that? Well, one, they don't know how. 
Okay, so just open a position and the working orders, click on the working, you know, the, uh, I'm sorry, in the open positions, click on the green arrow. It'll instantly take you in the working orders. And uh, let me show you exactly what that looks like. So I'm going to log in to my demo account, just place a trade real quick so you can see exactly what this take profit thing is that I'm talking about because I want you to know how to do this when you're placing these trades. And uh, if you go over to the box spread scanner, you can actually place your trades directly from the scanner. You can even choose up here whether you want demo or live. So we're just going to say demo right now. And uh, like I said, I'm logging into my Nadex platform right here. Okay. And then let's say, you know, we're going to go in and do some sort of, we'll try to find something. Okay, we'll, we'll find this pound dollar when we were talking about earlier. This is just an example. I'm not really placing this trade. It's going into a demo account. And uh, so, you know, if I chose these two, they both expire at the same time at 3 o'clock. Uh, and then if you go up here after you selected them, it'll basically drop off all the other ones. You can see that the floor and the ceiling there, the floor on the bought one and the ceiling on the sold one are lined up. So you got profit in either direction. And so I'll, just, I'll click buy. And uh, then after I've done that, then what I'll do is I'll click sell. And it'll open out of ticket window for me. So once that's opened up, then now I can go in and I could, you know, buy on this one right here. And I'll even make my ticket a little bit bigger. So I just uh, have to resize that. And let's make this one a little bit bigger just so you can see both sides. I do need to get both sides. It doesn't do me a whole lot of good because I'm not doing a straddle if I only have one side on. So, like, notice how right now it's 51.56. If I if I click place order at a lower price than the market, it won't fill me. It will go into working orders. So I'm going to actually do it so you can see what happens. And uh, I'm going to put it a couple ticks lower even just to make sure we don't get filled because I want you to see it go into the working orders. We're going to hit place order right there. And then over here, we're going to go ahead and hit sell. And it's at 51.42. Right now it's at 51.41. I'm going to hit place order again. So now I'm going to go over to my Nadex, and I have one open position. It filled my sell for me right away. It didn't fill my buy for me. I need to get in, okay? And it filled it for me, uh, or it has it working at 51.53. I want to get in at 51.56. So if I click 51.56, it'll update immediately. Notice I have this at 3, and then when I clicked 51.56, it instantly updated the price. So I'm going to do it one more time, 51.53. But if I click the ask, notice how the live price, or the entry price of the order will change. 51.56. Hit amend order. Instantly, it's going to submit that at the market price. It's going to fill me right away. And then I got to set my take profit. So on these two trades, you know, what is my risk? Well, I'm risking eight bucks. How do I know that? What's, just by looking at it, how do I know? Well, 51.50 is the ceiling. Okay, right? And I sold it at 51.42. Well, every tick, which is the last decimal there in the uh, spread right there, every tick is worth a dollar. Always. So 51.50 minus 51.42 is eight so eight dollars of risk on that side what about this side well 5156 5150 I have six dollars of risk on this side that's 5156 minus 5150 since I bought it I can't lose any money below the floor okay which is 5150 so basically on the way down so now that I put those two together I got sixteen dollars of risk and so I need to make sixteen bucks so I could bring up a calculator if I wanted to and I go okay well on the buy side, I have six bucks of risk. So I got, let's see, eight dollars, actually plus six, it's 14. So what we're gonna do is when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to do a take profit order on Nadex. So that way you'll have that order sitting there working for you. So when the market takes off after the news, you have your take profit ready to take advantage of it. There, there, we'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. By the way, if you got any questions, feel free to give us a call. You can reach us right here at 877-927-6648. I'm here and ready to take your calls again. That's 877-927-6648. All right, so looking at everything right now, how's it all work? How do we put it all together? What we can see is we can go in here to, uh, we got the open position, a pound, a dollar that we talked about on the last position. Now, again, this is a demo trade. I'm just showing you how to do a take profit order, okay? And what we figured out is we went and we added up the risk on both sides, and we came up with, hey, you know what, this one right here, um, if our average fill price was 51.42, well, 51.50 minus 51.42, that's eight bucks. If our average fill price over here is 51.56, at 51.50, that's a six dollar risk. So we have a 14 dollar risk on the trade. At the same time, we have an eight dollar risk on one side. We have a six dollar risk on the other. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna pull a couple other calculators just to help you out. All right, so we know that. We have a $6 risk on the long side. If we go short, let's say the market goes down, we expect the long side to lose. So we need to take profit on the way down, $14 plus the $6 risk we have on the long one. But what about if it goes up? Well, then we expect the short one to lose. It has $8 risk, so $14 plus 8 So we basically need to add 22 pips on our take profit on the long order, and we need to subtract 20 pips from our take profit order on the other side. So let's go in here and go, okay, well on the way up, we need to make 22 pips. So 22 above where we got in. We got in at 51.56. So 
I'll just simply go and I'll add 1.5156 plus 22 pips, so 5178. So I'm going to click on the green order arrow right here, and I'm going to simply change this to sell at 5178. Notice it opened when I clicked on the green one next to the buy, and make sure you are paying attention. It's so easy to do this wrong. Look at the buy, click the green arrow, it'll make one in the opposite direction. And remember, if I bought, I want to sell higher. So if I bought at 5156, I want to sell at 5178. So that would be 22 pips above, which would be that one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, plus it'll cover the $8 risk on the short side, ensuring I get that total one-to-one -to -one net, one-to-one -one at the end. Hit place order, close it out. Now, what about on the sell side? Well, if I go over here, I have... 20 pips. So I got 14 plus I have the six pips I plan on losing on the long one if it goes down. So what I need to do is I need to go and go, okay, well, where did I sell at? I sold at 1.5142. That's my average price right there. And then I'm going to set a take profit to buy back. So I need to subtract, okay, 0. 0.0020. So 20 pips, 51.22. So now I can go over here, click on this, 51.22, and hit place order. Well, now that I've done that, my order's been received, it's in there, and now let's check out what's going on. Well, if we go into our working orders, we're going to see that we have a buyback to buy back 22 pips below where we sold, and we have a sell to go in and sell it back 20, you know, four pips above where we bought. So we have our take profit, and we have our uh, take profit on our buy and our take profit on our sell in place. So now let's say the announcement comes out in the next two minutes, then and it flies up, then it'll fill the working order if it moves far enough to fill it for us. But let's say if it flies up and we don't have a working order there and they're like, oh wow, we need to take profit. We go to get it and all of a sudden it drops back down. We miss out on our take profit. A winning trade becomes a losing trade because we didn't set the take profit. So at least one, if not, you know, say 15 minutes before the announcement, and the newer you are, the course, the more time you're gonna need. Uh, I wouldn't go too much further out than 15 minutes. 30 minutes would be the furthest I would go out. But uh, you know, the closer, the better to expiration there. And uh, not expression, but to the announcement. So if the announcement's at, you know, let's say 5.30 in the morning, then you may want to be hopping in and placing the trade, you know, say at 5, you know, 15. Uh, maybe, you know, 5 o'clock at the very earliest. Really 5.15 is when you want to start getting everything on. So you go and you find that spread. Use the scanner to help speed that process up. Place your trades on both sides. Calculate your risk. And, you know, always make sure, you know, that you're tying them into the deviation levels. So I'd want to make sure that, say, 51.22 and 51.78 are within deviation levels because I don't want to be going for, like, multiple deviations on a trade. That would be a very difficult trade uh, to actually take profit on if I did that. And so I'd go in and I'd pull up the deviation levels. And, again, we had those built right inside the website for you. But um, I got them charted on here right now. So if we go over to pound dollar, you can see, okay, would that be, you know, how, like, how many deviations am I trying to break to get to that take profit? So I don't want to be having to go through, you know, like a whole, like one and a half deviations to get there. I want to be able to, you know, basically move half a deviation up, half a deviation down. And we're right at 0.5 right now. So, you know, half down, half up. And uh, half up right now, if we're looking at it, it's 51, you know, say 85. Well, we're taking one at 51.78, so that's great. So that's right within that half deviation move because if we're at 0.5. And what about this one? 51.18. Well, we're at 51.22. So we're right above half a deviation move down as well. So that's perfect. That's a half deviation move, one to one risk reward, and a very realistic movement expectation on a news announcement. And so that's that's basically the trade in a nutshell. It's just you need to know what markets to focus on. You need to be able to find your spreads fast. Okay. You need to correctly calculate your exit. And that's really the three parts to three parts of the trade. What time? Or I guess four. So what market, what time, what spread, and then what take profit level, okay? And uh, putting all those together will make it where it'll, uh, you know, help you do these trades on a consistent basis. And uh, they're a lot of fun. You'll enjoy doing them once you get them down. And the great thing is over on Nadex, you can always hop in, create a demo account, demo them, you know, at least for a couple weeks just to get down the process because part of it's just hitting the right button. Making sure you're selling higher than you're buying. Making sure you're buying back lower than you're selling. You know, so you just want to put all those pieces together to really make it uh, easy for you to be able to do it. But uh, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. But definitely inside the uh, members area there at TFNN, take advantage of the Astero section. And then for the deviations right here, you have access to these. They pop up around 7:30 or so every night um, on the markets and. We post them on there so that way you can get them. We got them on the uh, Nadex markets. We got them on the Forex markets. We got them on the Futures markets. 
And uh, we'll keep expanding this and adding more and more. We used to only have, you know, this top section, and now we've added all these areas, too. And uh, so always looking to expand the services and make it more and more uh, what people are looking for. And uh, I got a question today. Somebody asked me about, you know, what Forex pairs do we cover? Basically, we cover the Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, U.S. yen, U.S. franc, and U.S. Canadian. We also cover those over on the futures markets. Why? Why do we not cover, like, you know, pound yen and Euro yen and, you know, some of these other you know, minor FX pairs. The reason is, is because we're actually pulling this from exchange-based options. I don't want over-the-counter options, okay? I could pull implied volatility from over-the-counter options, but then that's a market maker's consensus on how far the market will move. Exchange-based options is based on how far the market as a whole says the market will move. And so I want that option pricing for accuracy. That's why they're so accurate. I could pull from other stuff, but I would not have the same accuracy. And I want it to be able to come from what is the market as a whole, so the market's going to move. And I do that by looking at the exchange-based options on those markets. And then I go in, I pull the implied volatility out of up to 16 different options, and I weight them and make my own, you could say, VIX. And then I tie that into an intraday deviation formula for each market. And that's where the deviation levels come from. So without exchange-based implied volatility, or exchange-based option pricing, you can't get true market consensus on expectation of movement because a market maker can hit a button and fill or take out implied volatility at any given moment they want to. It's, it could be one person's view, whereas an actual exchange base where all market participants are you know, hopping in there, that's going to give you a lot better consensus on what to expect um, as far as how far any given market can move at any given time. And um, But as far as other markets that we cover, we cover the S&P, we cover the NASDAQ, we cover the Russell, we cover the Dow, oil, natural gas, gold, copper, silver, corn, soybeans, and again, Aussie, pound, Canadian, euro, yen, and Swiss franc on both the FX and the futures markets in the CME. So uh, any of those markets right there we're able to uh, help you out with, and it's in black and white. You don't have to twist your head sideways to see it. It makes it very, very easy to pull it up. And you can um, just use this. You can even double click on it. And you can copy the level and paste it, um, you know, into like a charting platform. Or you know, there's a lot of different ways to take advantage of the levels. Some people they're only looking at one market, so they just hop on there and they post up to like say one or one and a half deviations. And until it hits like say one and a half, they don't even worry about two and three because you really need two and three if you haven't hit, you know, one and a half. No, not really. So they'll put that on there. And uh, if it starts moving that far, if they think they need it, then they can add it on. But it saves you from having to plot additional levels that you don't need. And that's pretty much how those work right there. Um, if we go in and we look at you know the markets for the rest of the week, we left off um, on one of the last segments there, talking about U.S. Canadian coming out on Thursday, having a lot of announcements coming out one time should be a really good solid uh, move. We we'll also have natural gas storage coming out at 10:30, so be aware of that. You could uh, look at natural gas and understand they build implied volatility into the options. So you want to look at the deviation levels to see how realistic is that move for you to see if there's a good one-to-one -one risk reward on it. And then on Friday, uh, we're gonna have a lot of holidays going on, okay? So don't trade, you can't trade Nadex anyway. Um, but I, you know, take the day off. Uh, we're gonna have, the Switzerland's gonna have bank holiday, Germany's gonna have bank holiday, Pound's gonna have bank holiday, uh, Canada's gonna have bank holiday, and they're also all gonna have holidays. Um, and they're switching over, by the way, um, just so you know, if, depending upon what, what kind of markets you're looking at. But Europe, uh, England and Switzerland are all going to have their daylight savings times kicking in on Saturday. So that will affect the market hours over there, like on the DAX and, uh, you know, on the FTSE. So just be aware of that. That could also have an impact on your FX trades, okay, because all of the, you know, their, their daylight savings time is finally uh, changing. And then um, let's see here. New Zealand will be on bank holiday and Australia will be on bank holiday on Sunday. And then you're going to have Switzerland, Europe, and um, Britain on Bank Holiday again on Monday. And uh, we will have a news report on Monday on the ISM, but there's so much not happening. I'm probably going to be pretty cautious to do much of anything on it. So, uh, you know, that really is going to be your week. Just don't forget, we got those major holidays coming up. And a lot of times, volume can get really light even on Thursday, the day before a holiday. So people start uh, bailing out early. So after you do those first couple trades right out of the gate on Thursday, uh, you may decide, you know what, that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. And uh, you go in and take advantage of those, you know, future that, like I said, launched out um, first thing in the morning where you got the USD Canadian. And that might be it after that. So <laughs> unless there's some major news that comes out, which I'm sure they don't want a whole lot of major news going into a holiday. But unless there's some major news that comes out, uh, you know, you may want to start looking to close shop a little bit earlier on Thursday. Okay. 
Um, but that ought to catch you up across the board for all the major uh, you know, things going on right now. And let's see here. Let's look at, of course, we've got the Cypress thing, and that same, you know, seems to be almost a never-ending issue at the moment. But uh, let's go over here and let's pull up, look at our deviation, see where all the markets are sitting at right now. It's still pretty relatively quiet overall. But uh, let's go in and look at each one of the markets, scroll through them, and just sort of see uh, where, you know, what kind of movements we got. So if we hop on in, we check out the S&P, we'll go ahead and look at, right there, we got the ES contract. And uh, market basically came in and uh, had some overnight movement from the settlement price there. So it went ahead and, uh, you know, moved across. And finally, and then moved on up, on up, on up. And then with that rise up, moved up to a half a deviation. Did not fill its gap. Thought it might want to for a minute, but decided not to. And uh, didn't play the gap fill trade this morning. Didn't line up, didn't like the pattern layout. And uh, it still has not filled. And it's just really hovering right now at that half deviation. Really a great scalping area all day long. And uh, if you are a scalp trader, these deviations are very helpful for scalping. You can take advantage of them in that section right there. Anytime they're at a deviation level would be the area where you might be looking to put on scalps. And you can even use Nadex to help hedge yourself while you're scalping. Um, we go over here, we can see that the uh, Dow uh, sort of you know trickled on up all morning long, moved up to half, and decided to go ahead and go bound on back up to 0.7. And it's bounced up and down between 0.5 and 0.7 pretty much all day. Hopping on over looking at the NASDAQ. And on the NASDAQ right there, we got the report moved on up to 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and just sort of been oscillating, really more oscillating around the half deviation than anything most of the day, even though it's went up to 0 0.7 a couple times, and uh, but not seeing any kind of major market movement. And then uh, going into our last major U.S. index, looking over at the Russell, the Russell moved on up, and it actually did decide to fill the gap. So Russell's been really fast lately on gap fills, and it looks like it decided today it was going to fill it, and it did. Moved on down. <clears throat> Pardon me. And right now it's uh, pretty much just hovering around the settlement level of yesterday where the settlement price came in at. And uh, sometimes that level can definitely vary a lot from the last price you see on your charts. So it's always good to know what the settlement price is based on what the exchange posts. And, and let's check out uh, oil. <clears throat> Oils uh, came on out and it moved up solid, solid today. Um, you'll get that right there. We're going to move on up to 0.5, and then on up to 0.7, and then on up to 1 at deviation. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> All right, take a little drink there. Clear my throat out. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1 deviation. And uh, right now it's just sort of sitting right up just above the 1 deviation level. But a pretty, pretty solid, perfect move. I mean, across the board, just the way it moved on up. And, uh, you know, you, we expect a deviation move. And the pits right there are getting pretty close. To, uh, closing down here in the next 45 minutes or so and we go on down we'll go and check out copper so uh, looking over at copper copper had some interesting moves today moved uh, from settlement moved on up to 0 0.5 0 0.7 and then back down all the way back down uh, you could almost call that I guess you could call it a gap fill if you wanted to but back on down here to uh, settlement price and now it's just for oscillating in between half and uh, you know settlement for the day and uh, we'll go in and check out our natural gas and on our natural gas contract right here, we've uh, moved up a solid one deviation move, and it had some big moves, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, almost all the way back down to settlement, back up to 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and one, and uh, it's looking like it's making one last push before the day's over along with the wheel. Take it there, we'll be right back after this break. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on u.s treasuries the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're going in looking at the different markets right now, seeing where they're at. And uh, natural gas is uh, booming on up past them right now, past the one deviation. Looking like it's trying to stretch right into uh, the end of the pit hours there, right into possibly one and a half deviations. And uh, going through looking at a couple of the other markets, we can go in and check out silver. It's been an interesting day on silver. And... Uh, you know, it pulled on down and uh, started moving on back up, but we didn't quite get the fill I was looking for earlier, but it did come down pretty close to it. So I was looking for a fill right around 60, and we didn't quite get there before that bump up, and then it ran right up at the end. Um, looking on over at the, let's see, we got a couple other markets we can check into. Let's go ahead and look at our corn markets right now. And uh, on the corn markets, we uh, from the settlement, we moved down to half deviation. We actually touched on the 0.7 deviation, but it looks like we're going to settle out around the half deviation on corn. And then on beans right over here, we're moving on up. Half deviation, 0.7. Again, settling at half deviation. Sort of a common theme for the day among most of the markets. And uh, let's do a quick wrap, final wrap right here. Uh, for the shows out, we'll go in and look at the currency pairs. We got Aussie dollar all the way up, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Coming on back down, might even fill in um, from the settlement price of yesterday. And uh, we got the euro dollar. And right here is the euro dollar. I mean, it's, I mean, from the days it's had, I mean, you look at this, here's yesterday, right? It's falling down, boom, 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 all the way down and uh, tightening the stops right there. And basically what we do is we say, hey, when it closes below, 
We expect it to, you know, basically go flat um, or reverse when that stops hit. And boy, did it just decide to go flat. So uh, nothing happening after just this insane volatility that we've been seeing um, with all the Cypress things going on. So uh, I'm sure there'll be some more news that'll come out that'll uh, wake it back up. But right now, I mean, just pure oscillation. Hopping on in, looking on the uh, pound dollar. And as you see, the pound dollar uh, basically moved on down to half point seven. It actually decided to move a little bit more than uh, the euro dollar today. And, uh, you know, you never know which one is going to be the big mover. But uh, euro dollar uh, decided to be a little bit quieter. And uh, we'll go in and check out the USD CAD. Had a nice, solid move on the USD CAD today. Moved on down from 0.5 to 0.7 to 1. And then uh, kept dropping. And uh, actually went down to one, almost one and a half deviations. I mean, we're just a few ticks off one half deviations. Really just a great move on USD CAD today. And we go ahead and check out the USD franc. And over here we'll see USD franc just oscillating, doing a whole lot of nothing. And uh, almost looks like the euro dollar. I mean, just, you know, like I said, a whole lot of nothing happening at the moment. And we'll pull up and look at maybe a couple other ones. We'll check out the uh, US yen. And US yen moved on up to 0.5 deviations and stopped and pulled on back. So that basically covers the uh, deviation levels for the day. It gets you set up for some news trades for the next week or for this coming week. Uh, make sure that you're aware that Friday is basically going to be a uh, dead day, so really nothing to do there. Same thing on Monday. So you might as well, uh, if you're a full-time trader, take the day off on Monday. All right? So enjoy yourself. Let some volume come back into the market before you start uh, putting your money back out there. And um, But if you are going to trade, trade light, trade protected, okay? Trade in ADEX. So uh, go in and make sure that you, know, you have something because you can get some insane swings when some of these markets close down. And uh, so you don't want to be in there and all of a sudden the thing gaps on you five points in the middle of nowhere and your stop gets ran. Well, with Nadex, that can't happen because every single trade is defined risk. So it's, not only should you be trading on something like Nadex that defines your risk, but especially on days that you should expect lighter volume, lighter liquidity. And uh, what we can look at, trying to see just a couple more things, just uh, I'll do one more quick cap review. Pound dollar, 5.30 a.m. coming up, all right? Then we got USD CAD eight or um, eight thirty a.m. Those are your two trades. You can also check out the ten o'clock USD yen for pending home sales, and you could look at the ten thirty crude oil inventories. That ought to set you up for tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. We'll see you tomorrow, and stay tuned. We have another great show coming up for you right after this. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.